Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's September 29th, and these are your headlines. First up, the Alby fishing in Rhode Island is being touted as the best in recent memory. We're also hearing that that crazy striper blitz that happened last year, kind of in the South Shore situate area of Massachusetts, might just be firing up again. Might be time to take another look at that spot. And we got two tournaments to talk about. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey guys, it's Gene from Black Hole Outfitters. Just want to let everybody know we're having our end of season clearance event. Every Old Town boat we've got, we've got hundreds of them are on sale. You get the best prices of the season on new pre-paddled and demo boats. Check out blackholeoutfitters.com. Give us a call at the shop. Uh, you're gonna get the best price on an Old Town that you'll ever get all year long. Check us out. So before we begin, we're just going to go through a couple of news items here. And the first one is the tournaments. Uh, we have the Tightline Slam. The Eastern Sound version is going to be this weekend. And that's a pretty cool tournament. They've got three species category, uh, striped bass, bluefish, and hardtails. Hardtails, of course, are false albacore, bonito, and Spanish mackerel. And they have nine different ways to win. There's all these different categories, fly and light tackle and slam categories and all this stuff. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to win. It's been a pretty popular thing, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty awesome event. Um, I think you could probably still get in on it if you went to tightlineslam.com and signed up probably tonight because um, it's going to fire up this weekend, but you may want to check that out. And even if you don't sign up, you may want to check their website and just see if you might want to do it next year. The other thing, we've got the Rhode Island Tog Classic. It's about a week away now. It's going to be run by um, Crafty One Customs up there in Portsmouth. And um, that's a one-day Tog tournament with all of the proceeds going to benefit the Three Angels Fund, which is a charity that helps families dealing with a cancer diagnosis uh, handle the financial and emotional hardships. Really great cause and something that's become near and dear to my heart. Uh, so you'll definitely see me there at the weigh-in, and uh, you'll be competing against me as well. So uh, go to Rhode Island RIToddClassic.com and sign up today. You can also make donations there if you can't make it. Uh, but definitely, definitely want to check that one out. Uh, another thing that we want to remind you guys about is that fluke fishing is coming to a close in two of the three southern New England states here. Uh, Massachusetts is going to close today. So. If you're dying to get that last flatfish, you're going to have to leave work early and get out there because uh, it's over in Massachusetts. And then in Connecticut, it's going to close on October 9th, so you still got a little bit of time, but uh, you got to make it happen if you're going to make it happen. So uh, those, are the, those are the regulatory things I wanted to tell you guys about. And then last up, of course, is the giveaway. We're giving away that Couch's Cedar Works J2 Jetty Swimmer in solid white. That's a tough plug to get and a, um, you know, and a great plug as well. And I've been through a lot of the photos. I'm a little bit behind on the photos right now because of all the family stuff I've had going on. But uh, I can tell you, so far, there is no clear winner, so you still got a great shot. Uh, get out there, take those pictures, and I, again, I don't care if it's a sunfish, a striped bass, or a giant bluefin tuna. Um, get those photos in to me at deanderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen. We'll get you in the contest, and we'll pick a lucky winner. Now we're going to start off the reports, and we're going to start on the North Shore of Mass as we usually do. In fact, I'm going to jump over into uh, New Hampshire. And uh, what I've been hearing from even the most southernmost reaches of Maine down through New Hampshire and into northern Mass is that the striper bite is definitely hitting that you know fall crescendo. Um, a lot of fast action, mixed sizes of fish, uh, some bluefish mixing in at times, and um, you know, it just sounds like things are starting to to come together to be that you know that fall run that we all expect and love. Um, for a deeper dive on that, let's toss it over now to James Jukes. How you doing, Dave? Coming from the mobile command center here, my little portable condominium. Uh, so it seems like this new moon has woken some things up. Down the southern end of the island, we've had some fish to mid slot size coming through. Uh, which has been nice. Uh, northern end of the island has seen some fish also. And uh, both over in Gloucester and north have seen some nice fish. Maine has uh, gotten some pretty big fish still. Uh, I've made my rounds and I've had up fish up to 38 pounds 
this past weekend uh, with a fair amount of 40 inch fish. So this fall run is definitely moving forward. Um, with that said, the fish are moving quickly. So some of the spots I was at one night, the next night they're gone. So you have to keep moving with those fish. Uh, as far as the freshwater side up this way, everything's really going good. Plenty of carp and pike in the Merrimack, the surrounding waters, lots of uh, bass have been being caught. Um, I know mass trout has been stocking. Uh, so if you want to get out and do some trout fishing, check their page and do that. Uh, or you can check in with your local shop, such as Surfland or uh, any of the others that are up this way. Uh, other than that, we're all set here from Plum Island. Uh, happy fishing, Dave. Now, all that stuff that I heard from the North Shore and what James was talking about there has been extending down through, you know, Gloucester and down even into Boston. Um, it's just like fish feeding with greater urgency. There's some better sized fish around. Uh, the daytime bite is really firing up. I've been seeing some good pictures of, uh, you know, solid fish, like 20 to 25 pound fish taken on top water plugs over the last week or so in that region. Um, as we kind of plow through Boston and get onto the South Shore, things are starting to gather up there again like they did last year. If you remember, we had about a three week blitz of crazy fishing in the Situate, Plymouth area. And um, you know, who knows if it's going to happen again, but there's a lot of bait in the area, and there's a lot of bass in the area, and it's been a thing that surf guys and boat guys are getting in on right now. So you have, uh, it's definitely time to head over there and check that place out. If you're not from the area and you don't mind traveling, yeah, it might be worth taking a look at. Um, the only place I definitively know that this is taking place is the cliffs. But I know just from kind of the things that I've talked to, heard uh, from other guys, that it's that it is spreading out, just no one's telling me <laughs> exactly where the rest of it's going down. But a lot of this action is happening during the day. These fish are on peanuts, and some of the peanuts are pretty big peanuts. Um, so, you know, surface swimmers, dandy plugs, uh, pencil poppers, mid-sized spooks, they're all getting the job done. Um, and the, the bite is extending into the nighttime as well. Guys are getting them on needlefish and swimming plugs and big soft plastics. Um, and the boat guys are getting in on it. Also, uh, these, the boaters seem to be concentrating more on the mackerel schools, which are, you know, one to two miles out. But that just kind of gives you an idea of just the size of the biomass of bass that are in that area at the moment. Um, and even as you get all the way down to the canal, you, you have to kind of understand that the canals are seeing wave after wave of fish right now and that lets you know that there's a pretty healthy population of fish piling up outside the canal right now. They're going to be extending over to like Scorton Ledge, they're going to be extending out onto Sandy Neck and even all the way out to Barnstable Harbor. So there, there's a lot of opportunity there for bass fishermen. As you kind of exit that area, we have been hearing about some tuna bite uh, action happening, you know, two, three, four miles out in Cape Cod Bay right now. Seems to be mostly giants there. Uh, as you come around the end of the Cape, there seems to be a little bit of a better mix, you know, from Stellwagen down to those east of Chatham spots. Um, there are some wreck fish out there and a lot of giants as well. There's been a lot more catch and release fishing going on uh, more recently, and um, but the giant fishery will open back up on October 1st, so uh, I think a lot of guys are saving the gas for, for that, um, but the fish are still out there. An interesting thing that I did hear from the Cape Cod surf is that Nauset Beach had some Albies this week, and that's not something that I hear every year. Um, and along with the Albies, there were good numbers of bass as well. So the bass bite is alive and well on the outer beaches right now, and, uh, and there's some Albies in there for you guys that are out there during the day. Heading down into Monomoy is where most of the boat action is going on for stripers that I've been hearing about um, out on the Cape. A lot of slot fish in the Monomoy rips right now, still a few bluefish, probably a few Albie schools out there as well. Haven't actually heard that, but I'd have to guess that there are. Uh, but if you want to concentrate on Albies and you're in the Cape, I would definitely concentrate on Nantucket and Vineyard Sound um, and probably favor more toward the Vineyard side. Um, haven't heard about any really big ones this week. Topping out right under 10 pounds is what I've been mostly hearing, but still good numbers of fish if you don't mind searching around for them. And a good way to get a good you know, finger on the pulse of what's going on in that region at this time of the year is to go to mvderby.com and just look at the daily winners and the weekly winners. You really get a good picture of... Um, of the fishing that's going on there from shore and from boat. 
Uh, for a little deeper dive on all of that and what's going on on the uh, vineyard front, let's head on over to Derby headquarters and talk to John Custer. Thanks, Dave. John Custer from the Vineyard Derby. We're halfway through the Derby now. It ends on October 15th. Thus far, it's been a strong tournament. We've got over 2,500 anglers registered. The fishing continues to be strong. The weather's been fantastic. Yesterday, we had a new grand leader shore bluefish weighed in, just shy of 16 pounds. The 18 pound boat bluefish continues to hold on the grand leader board. Eight pound shore bonito, 10 plus pound boat bonito. False albacore leaders are 16 and a half pounds from the boat that continues to lead. And from the shore, it's a 12 pounder. So the fishing's great, the weather's great, the vineyard's a wonderful place to be in the fall. We're grateful to all of, our, all of our volunteers who make things go during the Derby and run smoothly, and also our sponsors for contributing the wonderful prize awards that will be given out on October 16th at our awards ceremony. So we're halfway through. We look forward to the next two and a half weeks of great fishing, great weather, and great friendship. Come over and fish the Derby. As we leave Vineyard Sound and cross through the islands into Buzzards Bay, um, you know, this. The Albies just haven't been showing in that area, at least as far as what I've been hearing, um, like we would have expected. They haven't really crossed through there in big numbers. There are Albies in that region, don't get me wrong. Um, but the thing that most guys are concentrating on right now are striped bass. There's a lot of stripers that have probably come through the canal, some that have leaked through the islands. Um, but that whole Massachusetts shoreline coming from the canal all the way out to like New Bedford, um, is loaded with bass right now and you're, it's a wide mix of sizes from 25 inches up to 45 inches you know fish into the mid 30 pound class um, a lot of peanut bunker there as well it seems to be just a phenomenal year for peanuts and uh, the bass are definitely taking notice I'm hearing about a lot of nice fish taken up inside the estuaries right now um, but also the boaters are doing well during the day out in Buzzards Bay proper just fishing the reefs with big plugs um, so there's a lot you know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of bass around that area right now, and they're just going to keep moving east, you know, as these weeks progress. Now, the next couple weeks, they'll probably finally cross over into Rhode Island. But, you know, with, the, with so many fish still coming through the canal, um, it's pretty safe bet to think that we've got a pretty good run of bass that's going to come through this area for the next few weeks. Um, also starting to hear more about tog fishing now in Massachusetts. These fish are a little deeper than what you might expect at the beginning of the season. You know, fishing starting at 30 feet and going out, you know, even down to like 75. Um, but we are starting to hear more and more action um, on the TOG front, especially out around the Elizabeth and then out toward Westport as well. Uh, you can talk to Jason Colby about that if you want to get in on that kind of fishing. Um, inside the canal proper, bass fishing has been good this week again. Um, it's a little less consistent than it has been. It's kind of an on and off thing, but there's some big ones, uh, including an absolute giant, which sadly I don't have a photo of. Um, but heard from multiple sources about a fish that was in the low to mid 50 inch class, over 50 inches, under 55, but a, uh, a big one. And uh, for a little bit more on what's been going on in the canal this week, let's toss it over now to East End Eddie. Hi Dave, we've got an east flood tide here this morning on the canal. A little bit windy, but it'll be another nice fall day here. Uh, fishing continues to be fantastic with all the bait in the canal, which bodes well for, I, I think it's going to uh, be great going right into uh, October. Uh, could be like the old days uh, where fall fishing uh, really turns on. So, uh, Pistol Pete Freitas, who's a great lawn maker, a terrific guy, uh, took one of his uh, custom plugs, makes them under the brand name 50 number sign. And he uh, took one of his plugs in the West End and caught some slots the other day. Tony McCann from uh, Easton was on the other side, caught some bluefish and one striper that was uh, probably above slot on an Al Gags Green Mac uh, Whippet. And because the uh, east tide has been coinciding with uh, first light, all the guys fishing next to the uh, railroad bridge on the mainland side have gone over to the Cape side because uh, you can't get your lure under the bridge into the honey, ha honey spot there, the honey hole uh, on a east side. So they all went over to the other side. So now it's pretty crowded over there. And there was a blitz the other day that went from uh, Bell Road all the way to uh, Tuxet. And uh, stripers were all over the surface just slurping with bait fish. It sounded like a bunch of four-year-olds at a spaghetti dinner, just slurp, slurp, slurp. And uh, so Joe, uh, Joe Gray, who's an experienced canal rat, was right in the middle of this melee with 
elbow to elbow guys. Somehow he avoided uh, tangled lines. But Joe caught a couple of fish uh, in the 30 pound class. And the next day, Joe came back on Saturday and he caught four more fish that were uh, all above slot, well above slot. And the next day, Sunday, Joe got married. So congratulations to Joe on a momentous uh, week. Uh, he told me that all the uh, groomsmen and himself are going to be wearing waders at the wedding, so that should be an interesting event. And uh, so congratulations to him and his beautiful bride, uh, who's also obviously very understanding. So, uh, and then when I was right in the middle of that melee with all those guys elbow to elbow, uh, with a guy on my left got tangled with a guy on my right, so now I got a, a fishing line right in my face. I took two casts and I was out of there, but before I did, I looked up and, and there's uh, Rob Stork, big guy sitting on his bike looking over the situation, and uh, he decided uh, he wanted no part of that, so he turned his bike around, rode east to about pole 260 where he saw some breaking fish in the middle of the canal. He cast a, a, a heavy a cotton cordel, loaded cordel uh, that was pink colored, right perfect cast right outside the school, and it was only, as soon as it hit the water, it got, it got swallowed by... Uh, a big striper and, and Rob reeled it in, it was uh, 40 inches long. So congratulations to Rob and all the other fishermen who uh, made great catches this week. Uh, I was bouncing a rocket off the bottom, a uh, heavy rocket that was uh, shot truce colored uh, Mac. And uh, I caught a fish on the bottom and it didn't feel like a striper or a bluefish. I didn't know what it was, it wasn't real big, but I reeled it in, it was a 17 inch black sea bass. So because it was after September 4th, I put it back in the water, but if it had been in season, but I had a nice fish dinner. So uh, just an announcement about the closures that I, I mentioned before uh, last week. The Army Corps of Engineers has postponed that. It's now going to be October 12th to the 19th on the east end from the, on the Cape side from the Sandwich uh, uh, Recreation Area to Pole 60, right around where the power plant is. Uh, it's going to be closed for construction from the 12th to the 19th of October to everybody, including fishermen. So if you normally surf cast there, uh, be mindful of that. So my tip of the week is when you buy a surface plug, a lot of times the uh, trouble hook has these uh, safety tubes on the, on the hooks, uh, on the point of the hook. And uh, the best way to get those off is as you're pulling it off, twist it a little bit. As you're turning it, it'll come off better because if you just pull it straight off, a lot of times it'll get stuck on the barb. Uh, the, the barb will get stuck on the, on the, on the, uh, the little uh, plastic uh, tube. So just twist it and you'll be all set. So until next week, be safe and catch a big one. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate the report. Um, I know you got a lot of fans out there. We're starting to see more and more comments about how much they enjoy your report. So thanks for thanks for putting in the time. Uh, and last up in the Massachusetts world, we're going to head up inland now. We're going to toss it over to Roy Leva and hear what's going on on the freshwater side the scene. Hey, Dave. Roy Leva here with this week's Western Mass Fishing Report. Uh, things are still continue to shape up around here. Uh, the added rain has actually brought up some water levels. Um, I think the Connecticut River had been at like 4,000 cc's. Now it's at about 1,100 and still rising, which is really good news for the first time I've seen water going over the Holyoke Dam. Um, so smallmouth bass are uh, is the end thing right now on the river. Uh, smallmouth pike. Um, I haven't heard or caught you know any stripers. I, I don't know what the holdover deal is right now. With the waters being so low this past summer, I don't know if a lot of those fish just kind of moved their way back to the ocean. But there is a lot of shad fry around. Uh, early morning buzz bait uh, and throughout the day, any bladed baits, spinner baits, chatter baits um, have all proved to be uh, very effective. Um, other than that, uh, I found a few hidden gems this week. Um, some out of the way ponds that are loaded with large golden shiners. So. I've actually been stocking up on those uh, for the winter time ice season. Uh, this is the perfect time to do it, you know, now through the end of uh, October and November if you're into catching your own bait. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Oh, trout stocking. Trout stocking did start this week out here. Um, I believe the only two lakes in this area, well, out west of Worcester that have been done so far, maybe Onoda and Stockbridge Bowl uh, in the Berkshires. So my guess is they're probably uh, doing some of the deeper uh, lakes um, in order to, to ensure the survival of those stock trout. Uh, other than that, um, 
I don't know. This week, uh, we'll see. I, I'm, I, I've got some prototype rods I got to play with, um, so I might be doing some trout fishing uh, over the next uh, month or so. Obviously, uh, it is trout season, so I'm gonna trout fish over the next month. But I was hoping to start a couple weeks from now. I might start sooner, or probably will start sooner. I do want to get out for pike again on the river. So stay tuned for that report next week. Hopefully everybody's safe. A uh, lot of a uh, lot of prayers to uh, my family out in Florida. This hurricane uh, that's hitting them right now is going to be a doozy. So take care, guys. Stay safe on the water. Catch you guys next week. Thanks. We are the Fish Bites Nation, and this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting, because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. As we head over into Rhode Island, the false albacore is the undisputed king. I know I was saying last week that maybe the tog was trying to come in and steal their thunder, but we got more albies in this week and it's just been off the charts. Um, even with all that crazy weather we had, you know, big winds and the hurricane swell and all that stuff, um, it changed where the albies were, but it did not change the intensity of the bite. Um, so you, what you have to think about right now is the water's still a little murky and a lot of these fish headed up into the bay. They went up the Sakana River, they went up the East Passage, they went up the West Passage, and they found clean water up there. And they, you know, and they've been up there in big numbers, but the other thing that they found up there was lots and lots and lots of bait. I've been poking around a little bit in the bay this week and the numbers of peanut bunker in different sizes up there is staggering. You know, anything from one inch up to almost five inches. And, um, you know, with that number of bait, with that, you know, not number, but just that biomass of bait, uh, these fish are not going to be leaving anytime soon. Um, so, if you're heading out this weekend hoping to get on, on this crazy Rhode Island Albi bike, do not neglect the bay. If you're leaving out of, you know, Greenwich or Bristol or wherever, you know, do not neglect these inner waters because they are loaded with albies right now. Very good chance you're going to find them in there and not even have to get out into the ocean. Um, but if, you, if you're if you dead set on the ocean, there are plenty of fish out there as well. Um, you're just going to want to get out, you know, out beyond the muck line, you know, where the water cleans up, you're going to find those fish out there. And from what I've been hearing from guys that are doing it every day, it's been the best year that they've seen in a very, very long time. So it's unusual to go out and find fish every single time. And uh, that's what these guys are reporting right now. So. Um, Definitely, uh, definitely make it happen this weekend. It looks like too Saturday is going to have to be your day because Sunday looks like it's going to get snotty. But um, really good fishing out there uh, for Albies right now. Tog fishing kind of held its own. It's um, as I talked to more people, it sounded like it's a little bit more inconsistent than what we were hearing at the beginning. Um, so. You know, guys are finding them and they're finding some good fish, but they're fishing in deeper water, you know, 35 to 70 feet of water. And, um, you know, as the water continues to cool, those fish will move up a little bit more. But right now, it's good, but it is not great. Um, for a little bit more on what's going on on this inshore bottom fishing scene and some Block Island stuff as well, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. I don't have a lot to report on this week. Um, we had some weather, so I didn't get out all that much. I went black fishing twice. Both of those were kind of mediocre. We did catch fish, but I had to move a bunch of times. Um, it's funny because I, I'm in the fishing scene. I'm on the water a lot, yet I only really talk to people who are, who are around me. So I don't have a great sense of what's going on on Cox's. I don't really know what's going on at the race. I don't know what's going on off Cuddy Hunk, but around Point Judith and Block, we've had a lull with sea bass, which is interesting. Guys are getting kind of nervous that we might be on the backside of a sea bass bender years, years long. And um, the past few days, a new shot of sea bass have showed up. So um, don't despair. I think the sea bass, I think, I think the bottom fishing the past three weeks has been a little slow. And now for whatever reason, probably water temperature, fish are starting to jump into gear and the next two weeks should be good bottom fishing for us. Alrighty, take care. 
And you know, the Albi fishing is continuing the western half of the state as well, from the west wall all the way out to Watch Hill. Um, waters are a little murky, so the fish are pushed out a little bit from the shore, but as long as the remnants of Ian don't mess things up too much, those fish will return to inshore waters, and uh, there's really nothing indicating that the Albi bite should wrap up anytime soon. On the striper side of things, it's been, you know, the stripers have been smaller than what we might expect at the end of September. Um, you know, probably, you know, basically from like 20 to 30 inches has been the average. There's been some bigger fish, you know, some fish up to 40 inches, and a few big fish have been taken by the night guys, but they're really grinding it out for the few big ones that they're finding. Uh, the one place that seems to have some bigger fish right now is Southwest Ledge. Seems like a new contingent of fish moved up there. Uh, so that's a place you could concentrate on and go drop some eels and pull some cows. Um, but overall, we're, I think we're just waiting for that push of fish to come from the east and populate the uh, Rhode Island waters. It might just be an October thing this year. And uh, that's the story that I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. I'm Captain Greg DeBrule of the party boat Blackhawk out of Niantic, Connecticut. You've seen us at the sports shows, you've seen us on TV, magazines, newspapers, now you can come fish with us, okay? We're fast, we're clean, and we're comfortable. And besides that, we catch them, ask around. Come visit us at BlackhawkSportFishing.com. We'll save a seat for you. As we move over into Connecticut, um, Albi fishing is definitely, you know, holding court there as well. Um, the Eastern Sound fish kind of charged right through. They started off, you know, great guns there in the Eastern Sound and they went all the way out to the Western Sound. There are still plenty of pods of fish that are in the Eastern Sound. Um, it's just not gangbusters like it was last week. Um, also hearing about a lot more striped bass action now around Fishers Island. Um, that's, you know, typically we see that a lot sooner, but I, I don't know what the deal was, but um, bass fish has definitely picked up in that area and should hold on for at least a few weeks now. Um, and same thing along the, uh, along the shoreline between the Thames River, you know, that's a black point, and to the, all the way to the Connecticut River and throughout Niantic Bay. A lot of stripers in that area, a lot of mixed sizes of fish. Um, some of those deeper reefs and real famous spots like Bartlett's and Hatchet's and Black Point, they've got some big fish right now. Um, and the Connecticut River mouth has some big fish right now too. But there's also a lot of smaller fish, a lot of fish in that 25 to 30 inch range. Uh, guys are getting them day and night, they're taking top waters, they're taking small soft plastics. It's been pretty good. Um, and for more on what's going on in that immediate region, let's toss it over now to Mike Roy from Real Cash Charles. Hey, what's up, guys? I just got off the water. I'm going to give you this week's fishing forecast. Uh, as I indicated last week, the water temps are starting to drop. The water temps are going to uh, be in the mid to upper 60s in uh, most locations, and that's really kicked things off now that we're under 70 degrees. We're finding a lot more topwater feeds, uh, a lot of peanut butter around, uh, getting um, chased by bluefish and schooly stripers. If you could find pods of adult bunker there's been some bigger bass on those as always the live bait seems to produce the largest fish but we have had some pretty good results on big uh, nine inch sluggos and large topwater style lures um <clears throat> for hardtails the false albacore they have dispersed throughout long island sound so if you search around you may spend some time driving around but there are pods of false albacore all throughout Long Island Sound, feeding on silver sides and banchovies. So um, I expect things to continue to heat up next week as well. Heading west from the Connecticut River, you know, things have changed a little bit. The bluefish bite has really tapered off. Um, a decent number of slot bass in the area. There's some sea bass off the ends of the reefs. Um, and, you know, I just I haven't seen those big bluefish again. I don't know where those guys went. Uh, it's been lesser numbers of bigger bass in that area but again with all the with the migration kind of trending west we should start to see some more and bigger fish in that area very soon um, but there's definitely albies in that area and that's kind of the the eastern edge of where the better fishing is uh, so that's definitely where you might want to start your quest if you're looking for them um, for a more in-depth dive on that we're going to toss it over now to the guys from Black Hall Outfitters and uh, they're gonna give us a rundown on what they've been seeing. What's up guys, this is Matt coming to you from Black Hall Outfitters in Westbrook. All Run Madness fishing report, a lot going on out there right now. Mainly everybody's talking about the Albies. We started off with a really strong Albie push last week. 
The biomass of fish seem to have moved west a bit. The guys in Fairfield and down that way are doing very well with them. But we do still have a bunch of fish out there right now in the central and eastern Long Island Sound for everybody to target. A lot of luck is coming on your epoxy jigs, any sort of epoxy jig, uh, like a game on exo jig or a deadly dick, anything along those lines. Um, cast it into a feed, burned across the top so that it's floating or ripping kind of in and out of the water. Those are very good. You can downsize if needed if they're being a little picky. Um, another tactic that works if they are a little bit finicky are alley snacks. Um, we've got them here in hot pink, um, this more uh, light amber color, and then also in a pearl color. Those have been doing well. You can let these sink a little bit as well into a feed if they're not initially hitting it or if they're not hitting it on the retrieve. In terms of line, um, a good starting weight is going to be 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, this stuff is neutrally buoyant. It's going to give you a good strength to visibility ratio. For leader length on these, you're going to want to do something long, somewhere in the range of five to seven feet. And what that does is it ensures that if you overcast into a feed um, and your jig is past those fish, your line, your bright braided line is not going down into those fish and spooking them. So a nice long leader is going to be helpful. If the fish are finicky, it's always smart to have 12 pound fluorocarbon around too. You can downsize to that and hopefully that will entice a bite if those albies are being finicky. We do expect the uh, albie run to maintain strength even after this kind of wind and wave action we've got going on. So keep an eye on those local waters and get out there and get yourself a little tunny. In terms of stripers, um, there's a lot of action going on out there for striped bass, a lot of slot and schoolie sized fish out there, mostly under birds, um, which you're gonna wanna look for for the albies as well. Uh, right now, those stripers are on a lot of bait. Um, we've got peanut bunker, we've got bay anchovies, we've got silver sides out there. There's been some butterfish bombing around out there. So smaller uh, lures that imitate those smaller baits are going to be your best bet. We've got the Ozuri top knock here, a little top water spook style bait. Um, also a little bit of a sand eel SNS bucktail color. Anything sort of brown or olive is really good this time of year, as well as silver. Um, so good chance you'll be able to find some feeding stripers if you head out there, low light, first light, that kind of thing. Lastly, we've got the tight line slam uh, fly and light tackle tournament, tournament for conservation coming up. Um, there's an Eastern Long Island Sound uh, tournament from September 30th to October 2nd. So it's not quite there yet, but keep an eye on this. It's for a great cause. The Western tournament is October 14th through, through 16th, so a little bit later. Um, but certainly if this is something you're interested in, you can find details on their website or on our website. So head on out there, enjoy that fall run madness and make a memory. Um, heading west from that area, the, it's, it's becoming more and more albie centric. We just have a really good push of fish that's moved into the western sound. And uh, you know, things are looking very good out that way. And you know they don't get them every year out there. So especially in these numbers, so there's a lot of excitement surrounding all of that. You know, the, the pegs are picked clean of epoxy jigs. Um, and there's just a lot of people going out there looking for them. Look for a lot of crowds on Saturday this week. Um, and for a deeper rundown of what we're seeing in the Western Sound, we're going to toss it over now to a substitute player because, uh, because Max is on vacation this week and I'm not sure if it's going to be Tyler or one of the other guys, but uh, cause they haven't sent me the video yet. But um, here's a quick rundown of what's going on out in the Western Sound. All right, guys, it's Jake from Fisherman's World here. I'll be fishing has been really good in the Western Long Island Sound. There's a bunch of bait, deep water, shallow water. The typical bait in the deeper water is anchovies. In shallower water, it's been peanut bunker. In shore, there's been a bunch of bluefish harassing those peanut bunker. Albies are starting to make their way there. Out here, it's been really good. Um, coming up in the next few weeks, the stripers should be coming in heavy. Look for the birds. There should be some epic blitzes underneath of it. As far as bottom fishing, corgis are good still. Um, fluke has been extended to October 9th, so get on that. And then tog season coming up October 10th. Should be good. Uh, tight lines, everyone. And to wrap up the Connecticut report, we're going to toss it over now to Captain Noah Johnson and Rowan Little. They're going to give us a rundown on some of those lesser utilized fisheries that we have here in New England. Hey, Dave. Noah and I are out today exploring some small freshwater creeks, but uh, we've definitely got some options for some awfully weird stuff to do. Lately, Noah's been going out and finding blitzing smallmouth bass. There's been a lot of blitzing smallmouth bass in certain areas in the Connecticut River, mostly on the lee side of points and jetties and things of that nature. 
They're eating peanut bunker, spot fin shiners, juvenile herring. A lot of stuff. We haven't had a lot of rain, so some saltwater bait is pushed well up the river. They're pretty easy to catch. You can use something like a Zara puppy, a small popper, any smaller topwater offerings take them quite easily. Now on the saltwater front, there's other weird stuff to do. This year we have loads and loads of needlefish around in Long Island Sound. And uh, they're a pretty odd, interesting fish. And if you've ever been interested in trying to catch one, they're especially fun on light fly gear. I'll use rods in the four and five weight range and uh, very simple, small bucktail streamers. But the key is you need to tie a small trailing hook about three inches behind them because they'll often come up and nip at the fly with the tip of their snout but they won't get the hook in a part of their snout where you can actually hook them very well. So you need that trailing hook to catch right in the corner of their mouth. And they can be a lot of fun. They'll jump on the hook quite readily and uh, even for their size being narrow and light, they fight pretty well, but they can be a lot of fun. Go out and try and find them in some of the warm water, salt water areas. Good luck everyone. And last up, gonna take a little flight now down to the, down across the equator and hear what's going on in Costa Rica at Marina Pez Vela. Hey there guys, it's Ben Gilmore here from the Marina Pez Vela in Costa Rica with this week's fishing report. Right now we got a really nice mahi-mahi bite going on. The great thing about mahi-mahi is that they come really close to shore. Often we'll catch them only about 8 miles out and right now we've got tons of 15 to 20 pound fish. What's going to happen over the next few weeks, we got a lot of rain this time of year and the numbers of mahi-mahi are just going to increase as the debris washes out of our rivers causes debris lines offshore and we got the best mahi-mahi fishing of the year kind of around the end of October and early November so looking forward to that one we got a good billfish bite going on we got sailfish blue marlin and then inshore we got rooster fish snappers jacks and mackerel hope to see you guys down here in Costa Rica back over to you and that's what I have for you guys this week in the reports hope you find them useful don't forget about the tight line slam and definitely don't forget about the Rhode Island Todd Classic charitable tournament for a great cause hope to see you guys there if you're not a subscriber to the fisherman i highly recommend heading over and checking out what i call the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing um, you get 12 hard copy issues sent to your door and you get 20 something digital issues sent to your email all throughout the uh all throughout the off season throughout the season and then even in the off season we send you newsletters with reports and all kinds of other things uh, go over there and check it out and if you're still not interested, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get some, you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching. No new entries this week, so the standings remain the same. Bluefish is the fish of the month for October, and there are some gators around, so go out there and get on the board. And here are the current top four leaders. First place, Rob Carrizano. Second place, Dean Paella. Third, Sam Dibner. And fourth, Garrett Weir. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. As for the Coastal Kayak Clash, no new entries this week, so now is your chance to make up some ground and compete for that Hobie kayak.